Well, it's been a while since I've been on, but hey, oh, my little dog's down here again. Every time, never fails. Okay. Uh, I haven't been on for a while, and I haven't been doing any work on this uh, NC240D receiver because I've been waiting two weeks for a replacement tube that I found that was dead. This uh, 6SL7 was dead in that receiver. Okay, I just yesterday got this in the mail. It was a box with a new tube in it. Well, it's not a new tube. It's a, you know, one that was tested and it's tested really good. But it's new old stock. So, anyhow, so I got that and uh, I put it in. Still nothing happened. So, uh, anyhow, I'm going ahead and I did get an email from my brother this morning. He came over and troubleshooted it for me. Since if I did it, it would take me forever. I would probably take, you know, it could take me a month, I don't know. But uh, anyway, I got the whole story finally. In fact, he did uh, just today from Henry Rogers. It turns out he was not the one that put all the, the new capacitors in it and put all the new resistors and all that sort of stuff in it. And uh, anyhow, as he says, he says, I got that NC40D from Mr. T. Well, Mr. T is a guy we knew who just passed away recently and he was getting rid of all of his stuff. Well, apparently uh, this is one of those things. But um, he said, anyway, he said, Mr. T had uh, pur purchased this from Ethan. Well, Ethan is over at... Uh, uh, ham and hi-fi so he bought it off of him and uh, he said it's a really nice example and it is the highest serial number that's been reported by or for the NC240D receivers he says I knew when Mr. T owned it he was poking around in that receiver trying to figure out the mods it looked to me uh, like back in the past a power transformer failed and a lot of them did because of the paper capacitors to ground on the high voltage winding. And guys leaving receiver turned on 24-7. The guy that did the replacement and the mods looked like he did a pretty, pretty nice work. But if there ever was any documentation of any of the mods, it's totally not lost now. We don't know where that is. Anyway, Mr. T never got anywhere with it. So somewhere along the line... <laughs> When he was doing his semi-annual clean-out, he gave it to me. I never did anything with it, and this is Henry Rogers, who used to run the radio museum in uh, Virginia City. And uh, so he knows all about these receivers. He has, he has serial numbers going all the way back for all kinds of stuff. He's got an entire warehouse full of nothing but radios. Um, so anyhow, she said, he said, I didn't do anything with it because I have a really nice NC240CS commercial version that is tagged as an airport receiver. So anyway, that NC240 is the highest known serial number and very late in the last production run, probably late 1947 or early 1948. Well, I'm guessing 1948 if it's one of the last serial numbers. Um, if that's the case, this receiver is 72 years old, <clears throat> or 73 years old, whatever. Those NC240Ds are uh, pretty good performers. They have the best features of the catacomb receivers. They call it a catacomb receiver because the entire tuning unit down below, it's on uh, a track. And when you turn, pull out the knob and turn it, that's what changes the bands on this thing. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so anyhow, see also uh, the really good crystal filter that actually works and when aligned, the dial readout is pretty good. Kind of vague, but good for an analog uh, dial. So anyway, and then my brother responded uh, what he did with it. He said, I looked at Larry's NC240 last night and found the problem. And it was just one problem. But 
without the 6SL7 I got, we would have never figured it out because there was no way to get it to work without the 6SL7 that was totally dead. So he said, I can see that the conserval re recapping and the resistor changeouts were, were done, but no receive audio. Check the audio se section from limiter portion, S the 6SL7, to speaker as good. But putting audio tone on a cathode of the detector portion, no speaker output. Uh, turns out the cathode to cathode coupling cap was in place correctly between the two sections. But, and here's the big but, there was a 47 ohm, 4700 ohm replacement resistor in the wrong place on the detection sen uh, section of the 6SL7. Took it off the plate of the detector and moved it where it was supposed to be to the audio coupling cap from the limiter. Now all bands work. And uh, that's what the main problem was. It was not only the dead 6SL7, which of course would make nothing else work, but the fact that it was <laughs> that one resistor was put in the wrong place. And that's what caused the whole problem. So, anyhow, here we go. Another look at this radio. Oh, dog, shut up. And uh, let's try to get it all in there. And I'll get most of it anyway. Anyhow, so, yeah. Let's see, where is he on? Right there. Now, since it has tubes, it'll take a while to warm up. Whoa! Sorry about that. So there was no audio before at all. And actually, if this were nighttime, it would be on uh, WWD right now. But there was no audio at all before, nothing. But it does work on all bands. The uh, only thing is, I have only a clip lead with the, the antenna on the back, and that's all. But, uh, yeah, and the weird thing about this, like I said, the strange thing about the way this changes bands, you pull that out, and then you can change bands. See? And then, when you're done, you push it back in. And that's how it works. And you got to get all kinds of noise from this, this thing too. But, it really does work. I was getting WWE. But, anyway, so that's how it went from zero audio to not working because of one resistor. But, as you can see, it still is a nice looking radio with, with a matching speaker. And uh, if you can ever find any of these, uh, you might find them on eBay, but they're probably going anywhere from $200 to $300. And uh, I paid a whole $20 for this. So, And then the tube cost me another $10. So, there you go, $30 or something. So, anyhow, that's the story on this one. And uh, that'll be it for today. And uh, we will see you guys later.